So troubleshooting is a complicated topic. I think it's kind of a meaty topic and it's something I want to talk about today because it impacts really anybody using Linux, anybody developing on Linux. And we're all sort of developers to varying degrees because we do technical stuff with Linux. So troubleshooting is one of those things that sometimes we avoid doing because we're just trying to get our Linux system working. In that case, if we run into a problem, we really don't want to do a deep dive on what the actual proper fix is. We want to just get our Linux system working. So in that case, most of the time, what you're doing is actually called a workaround. So a workaround is when you're just trying to get past the impact of the problem. You're not really trying to fix the problem or figure out why the problem has occurred. You're just trying to move beyond it. So it's important to note that on support forums, we see a lot of workarounds. If you, if you go to Stack Overflow, you'll read lots of different workarounds uh, to varying degrees and also some troubleshooting, definitely. Uh, but definitely in support forums or online, somebody says, hey, my system isn't working. I get this. What should I do? To help that person, we really want to get them back up and running quickly. So you want to just give them a workaround like, oh, do this and it should work. And the person goes, oh, wow, thanks. It's, it's fixed. It's working. Now, the other side of the coin to a workaround is when we actually try to identify the problem. What is going on here that is causing the failure? Why is it failing? Uh, what should it be doing instead of failing? Uh, so what behavior is broken? And then how do we fix that failure? When we do that, we're really doing what's called, called root cause analysis. So that's really different from a workaround. And this is the process that we generally do on bug trackers. We want to find what specific thing is broken. Then we want to fix that thing. Fixing that thing is going to result in the failure going away, and it will result in an improved user experience, but it may not be the fastest way to help a user who's experiencing the failure. So it's sort of a detour from just getting back up and running quickly. So there are times when workarounds are really important. If you are experiencing an issue that is impacting a production system, it's impacting real users, or you just don't have time, workarounds can be super handy. When we're fixing bugs, we want to identify workarounds sometimes because sometimes these bugs can be really impacting users a lot and we just want to we want to alleviate that problem it's like a band-aid on that problem at least it won't hurt users as much while we look for the real solution but with the bug tracker we always want to come back to the root cause analysis identifying what is broken what is the proper angle of attack to fix this problem that we've identified and then we want to commit those fixes. So that's really important. So what does it mean to go too deep on a problem? I mean, isn't the deeper you go on a problem, the better? Aren't you getting closer and closer to the root cause? Well, well, not necessarily, because the, the problem is happening at a certain layer in the system, and you want to fix that failure point. Uh, going too deep on a problem means you're actually looking at replacing a big piece of the system or fundamentally changing the system and that will result in the problem being fixed uh, but it also will result in a significant re-architecture of the system so when we look at uh, root cause analysis we really want to look at the system as it exists we want to look at what's available to us what tools and technologies are available to us right now to fix the problem. Uh, you can do some analysis of, do we have the correct technology? Is this technology adequate? Uh, but often 
I really consider that kind of out of scope of the root cause analysis because in the root cause analysis you really want to look at the system as it exists right now. So examples of where this can negatively impact open source projects going too deep on a problem is that you start to fix something and like a good developer who loves to code, you dive in, you start tweaking some code, you fix the problem, and you're like, wow, I could make this a lot better, and this solution really has some limitations, so I'm going to rewrite it all. I'm going to create this new technology that works better. That's great. That's a huge part of open source, doing that, redesigning things, refactoring things, making them better. The thing is, is that it's really a separate effort from the troubleshooting. So it's important to identify when you are fundamentally improving the system, which is great, but it's not, you're no longer doing the root cause analysis anymore. And if you fail to identify that sort of dotted line and when you cross it, what can happen is that your efforts to fix problems can actually turn into these giant projects. And the giant projects might be totally awesome. They might be something that we need to do, but they need to be identified as a separate project and you need to look at the level of effort required to do that. So you don't just get pulled into these, you just, otherwise you turn a mountain, a molehill into a mountain. Yes, that is what you do. So you don't wanna do that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I just wanted to chat a bit about troubleshooting. I think it's such an important topic. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on the topic as well. Uh, please, uh, probably the best place to follow up is just in the YouTube comments. And I hope to post a video of a similar vein soon. See ya.